Just as Zakharia opened his mouth to recite the last stanza of the poem, a message came to Amin's phone. I got a message from my friends, sir. Never mind, they can wait a little bit. We won't rush. You cannot read the last stanza in a rush. I'd recommend you to switch off your phone now, so nothing distracts us from it. Baş ağardı, rüzigarım olduğu gün günden siyah. Etmedim set heyfkim, bir mahi rüxsare nigah. Gedir bilmez hem deminen, eyledim ömrü tebah. Vagife ya Rabbana, öz lütfünü eyle bana. Senden özge kimse de lütfü inayet görmedi. I thank God a million times for His grace. The first lines of the last stanza do not relate to me. My wife was a faithful woman and really loved me and cared for me. Neither do I complain about my present condition. Though I am old, I am feeling well. And I believe it is not an accident that yesterday I found such a friend as you according to my heart. Our meeting each other and our sweet conversations are signs of God's goodness. Mr. Zaharia, when I was coming to Georgia, I couldn't even imagine meeting someone like you here. I am amazed. You are like a true Muslim. Now I understand why the Quran says, you will find the nearest of them in affection to the believers, those who say, we are Christians. We differ in some of our views, but in my opinion, we have more in common. We are united by the divine love burning in our hearts, by our common grief of separation from the Creator, and our common longing for reuniting with Him. That is what grace is all about. For grace means God forgiving people and people accepting each other. Grace means kindness. The law punishes sinners, but grace forgives them. Grace comes from the divine love. Vagif had not seen that grace, goodness and mercy in people, but he did see it in the Lord. All prophets saw this goodness. Prophet Nahum wrote, The Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. Prophet Micah said, Who is a God like you, who pardons iniquity? You do not retain your anger forever, because you delight in unchanging love. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. What beautiful words! Mr. Zaharia, how many words from the prophets you know by heart? As your people say, Dama dama jololar, aha aha selolar. For over 40 years I've been taking little time every day to read from divine books and literary masterpieces and writing the words I like in my notebook. Then later I would reread them, meditate on them and memorize them. Those words are my spiritual food. The Lord Himself talks to me through those words. I got to know Him through these years. He is not a tyrant. He is a beautiful and loving Lord. And Vagif knew that. Many mullahs and priests in the Caucasus used religion for worldly gain, but poets and believers like Vagif, Sayat Nova and Guramishvili took refuge in the Lord and drank the sweet wine of the grace. Listen to these lines from Sayat Nova's poem. Bu dünya bir penceredir. 
Dağlarından bezmişəm, Bülbül tek uçmaq istərəm, Bağlarından bezmişəm. Do you know who wrote these lines? Our great poet, Sayat Nova. He was an Armenian from Tbilisi. He composed most of his poems in your language, in Azerbaijani. He passed away two years before Vagif, killed in 1795, when the Persian Shah Qajar destroyed Tbilisi. He flew away like a nightingale. Sir, we have suffered so much from the Armenians. They have seized our original lands, driven us out of our homeland, killed our people, plundered our wealth. I know, I mean. But I believe that if all Armenians were like Sayat Nova, there would be peace, security, brotherhood and prosperity in the Caucasus. There is a lot of pain, bitterness and unforgiveness. The law demands justice, revenge, punishment. Only by grace we can restore relationships. The Gospel says, The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Moses gave God's Ten Commandments to his people, so they should not fall into sin. Believe in one God, do not worship idols, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not murder, honor your father and mother, etc. But people always broke God's commandments. Then what was he to do? Was he to destroy them or to show mercy to them? The grace which is granted by God in Christ is higher than the law. The law is like a ruler measuring us. It affirms our crookedness, but it cannot straighten us. Grace, however, does straighten us and gives us new life. The crookedness Vagif saw in this world can be fixed with grace and truth, not with the law. We also love Prophet Jesus very much, and Islam invites people to live by the truth and the law. I know, I mean, Islam has shown respect to the previous religions, to the people of the book, and has called people to truth, to peace, to departing from evil, and Vagif exposed the evil deeds of the world. But the poet had a tragic end, just as Jesus did. I wonder, if we are pure like these holy people, will our end inevitably be tragic? In this world, love is doomed to tragedy. If you want a life without the tragedy, then do not love God and people, only love yourself and the world will not hate you. But I am afraid that after such an untragic life, your whole eternity will be tragic. You will not fly back home to the eternal life full of meaning, but you will exist in the eternal meaninglessness. That is horrible. May God keep you from such fate, my son. Continue searching for the truth and researching the divine books. And most importantly, never betray your conscience. Do not go against your conscience. Follow Wagif's example. Always take refuge in the Lord. Trust only in His grace and goodness. I mean, God will keep you and you will live a long life like me and your end will not be tragic. Don't be afraid of anything. If you are on the side of the truth, you will have a clean conscience and will never be afraid of anything. Sir, I wanted to ask you a question. The 30th anniversary of Vagif's birth is approaching. Are you going to visit his grave in Shusha again? No, I won't go to Shusha again until it is freed from the occupation. If I survive until that happy day, we will go there together with your family. I'd love to see the restoration of Vagif's ruined mausoleum with my own eyes. That would be so nice! Oh, how I long to get there and kiss the ground of my fatherland! But why don't you visit Vagif's grave on his birth anniversary? You did go there on his death anniversary. There's an ancient tradition in the church. 
Christians don't celebrate the birthdays of the saints. Saints are remembered on the days of their death. And some poets are like saints, like prophets. That's why I visited Vagif's grave in his death anniversary. Well, I mean, I know you have to leave now, but I have one more thing to tell you. Whenever you come to Tbilisi, my door is open for you. Call me and I will meet you. Also, I am going to visit Baku next year in May, if God wills. That's great! Come and stay with us. If you stay somewhere else, I'll be offended. Okay, I will call you. What business will you have in Baku, if it's not a secret? I am going to visit Samed Vurgun's grave on the 60th anniversary of his death for the beautiful prayer he wrote. Goymachi yerlerde sürünsün beşer Dünyada kalmasın ne pislik ne şer Yaxşılıq insana bir sənət olsun Dünya baştan başa qoy cennet olsun and now, Emin, my special friend, go safely. You are in my heart. From now on, I will always be praying for you. We do not say farewell. I believe we will meet again, both in Tbilisi and in Baku, and, if God wills, in Shushat.